I'm going to be uh, sharing a little talk with you. And for most of it, what you're going to see is my PowerPoint. And I've committed an arch sin. All right. So you'll have to forgive me because all of the PowerPoint slides are words, not a single picture. My goodness me. As a teacher, I, I should have my wrists slapped for that one, shouldn't I? Eh? Not very good. So we must work on that one. Anyway, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully you will see a blue screen with a title which says what's in a name. If it doesn't come up, then uh, I'm absolutely lost. All right. But we'll see what happens when we do this. And I want to start with a Bible reading, actually. OK, which is uh, the one that I'm taking of the text, if you like. And this is uh, the story of Moses and um, he's in the wilderness and um, God's calling him at the burning bush to go and speak to the children of Israel who are enslaved in bondage in Egypt. And Moses says to God, as you do, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? He doesn't know the name of God. And God says to Moses, and these wonderful words, I am who I am. I am. This is what you are to tell the Israelites. I am has sent you, me to you. Wow, well, that's a, an interesting one. And uh, it was the name that God's, it's his covenant name. But what we're going to look at this morning is some of the other names of God in the in the scriptures and particularly starting in the Old Testament and uh, to look at some of the things you might not have noted in your Bible about the spellings of things okay and in Genesis chapter 1 we get one of the names of God and in the beginning God created and the Hebrew word here is Elohim which is God the creator, if you like, with a small O on that particular case. OK, now Elohim is Hebrew and it's actually plural. And uh, God says again, let us make man in our own image. And uh, there we have that plural and the plurality of the Godhead shown already. So that is one of the names of God. But you also see the word Lord used a lot. And that's the word Adonai, which means the Lord, if you like. But if you see the word Lord or God in all capitals, in most Bibles, it, it, it's not necessarily so, depending on which version you use. But the convention is that if it's in capitals, all capitals for Lord or God, it's normally the covenant name that we see from uh, uh, Genesis uh, there, Exodus, sorry. Uh, Yahweh, or in some Bibles, it's Jehovah. Now, there is some contention many years ago, well, years ago, it was always Jehovah. And uh, lots of scholars and people far cleverer than I thought it must be um, Yahweh. Uh, and in some modern versions, that's what you find. Um, my own studies would make me think it's actually Yehovah. Um, but we're going to stick with what uh, the scriptures have given us, which is Yahweh and Jehovah as that name. Um, what is it about? Um, it's the sacred name of God. In fact, it's one that um, the Jews won't use. When it comes in the Bible, in the Hebrew, what they do is they put the little lines and dots underneath the word, um, they're really vowels, but they're put under there so that when the person sees the word in a, in a Jewish synagogue or whatever and sees the word Lord or God, this sacred name, they don't use it. They actually use the word Adonai or Elohim. It's such a, a, a holy and sacred word that it's not used. Um, in fact, some people would say the many Jews would say that the actual pronunciation of the word is lost and won't be used again until the Messiah comes. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true, but it's an interesting tradition nonetheless. Now, I want to show you how this word 
the words for God I used. And I've used an example from uh, Isaiah chapter 40. I think Ollie was uh, reading something from Isaiah chapter 41. So we're, we're close by Olo. And uh, we're starting at uh, verse 9. And there you can see the, the scripture. Here is your God, it says. Uh, and there the word is the creator God, Elohim. And then you see the word the Lord with a small o and a small r and d. See the Lord Adonai Yahweh, the Lord God, the sacred covenantal name of God. He is the Lord and covenant keeping God. And again, you see in verse 13 there in yellow, you can see it. Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord? This is Yahweh. Again, that covenantal name of God. Now, I hope you can all see this. And uh, this is the Hebrew and the English as well. And you can see there verses uh, 9 and 10. And down at the bottom there, you've got 13. And you've got, behold, your God, Elohim. And behold, your Adonai Yahweh, the Lord God. And uh, at the bottom of the screen, verse 13, the spirit of Yahweh or Jehovah. Okay, now these are sacred names of God, but in the Old Testament, uh, what you find is that this name is added to, if you like, and attributes of this name of God are added. And so you get the word uh, Yahweh Jireh, but I'm going to use the word Jehovah. Um, it's more, uh, to my understanding anyway, and you get this lovely understanding of what God is really like. And God calls himself Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is our provider. And the first one of the first instances of this is in Genesis, where Abraham's going to offer his son. God's told him, go and offer your son as a sacrifice to me. And he goes up and uh, Isaac says to, to Abraham, hang on, dad, we're, we're going up to do this sacrifice, but uh, uh, we haven't got anything to sacrifice. And Abraham knows he's got to sacrifice his son. But he just says the Lord will provide Jehovah Jireh. And in fact, as we know, he didn't sacrifice his son. It was a test. But at the end of the test, um, Abraham came out uh, on top because God provided he said stop don't sacrifice your son I can see you love me that much but God and it says in the New Testament he who did not withhold his only son this is Jesus but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also free give us all things he did not withhold his son Abraham was allowed to withhold Isaac, but God didn't withhold his only son to be our sacrifice. Mm. And God is our provider, our provision in terms of eternity. Thank you, Lord. And the second one is another name for God, which is Jehovah Rophi or Rophi. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, actually. And it talks about, I am the Lord, your healer. And in this particular instance where it occurs, um, the children of Israel are in the wilderness and they come to some waters and they're pretty rank. Um, you can't drink them. And the Lord showed Moses a tree and he said, cast it into the waters. And the waters were made sweet and drinkable. Mm. He healed the waters. And on Calvary's tree, God exchanged our sicknesses for his health. Jesus claimed to be the one who would reverse that curse and heal all sicknesses when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Notice the name I am, uh, the sacred name of God that Jesus calls himself uh, in John chapter 11 and verses 25, 26 going on now another name for god is jehovah nisi or nisi the lord is my banner or victory and god promises to be our victory now 
what I feel about that is that ultimately the victory is our eternal destiny that we are going to be with God in heaven. It doesn't matter what happens on earth, particularly that uh, physical victory in uh, the Lord is my victory or banner. But Jesus provided himself to be our victory when he rose triumphant from the dead, saying, I am. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. And so the Lord is our victory. He is the one who will bring us to eternity. Now, this number four out of there's eight of these. So bear with us. And now, if you can pronounce that, you're a better man than I, Gangadin. Jehovah Makadesh, I'm going to say. The Lord, our sanctifier, who makes us holy. Now, this is perhaps one of the most important, actually. Um, sanctification. If you look in Leviticus and uh, you look at chapter 20, you find there are so many as a list. I do commend you to read Leviticus 20, actually read the whole chapter. And it's quite salutary when you look at uh, the things that are there, but the sins that were there and the Lord says, come out of all these things. I want to, you to be sanctified, to be holy. But we know that man is full of sin and uh, separated from God. But Jesus says you can become holy because I'm the way, the truth and the life. And if you'll follow me, I will be your sanctification. I will be your holiness because your sins will be forgiven by me and you'll be pure again. And five, Jehovah Shalom. If you meet a Jew, you just say Shalom, Shalom, peace, peace. What a lovely thing rather than hello. And uh, we know that, uh, G that uh, God is our peace. I'm leaving, and in the New Testament it says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the, peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus is our peace. He gives us that gift. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Rahi, or Rohai, the Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. And we see that the Lord is my shepherd, the well-known 23rd Psalm. And we see in Jesus, the I am again, the name of God. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. We're his sheep. And Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary for us. Jehovah Tidskinu. The Lord, our righteousness. What a, I, I really want to read this to, to you. It's a wonderful promise that uh, when Jesus returns, uh, that there will be a wonderful time of righteousness on the earth. Um, but it also refers to us as Christians of Jesus. It says, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom from God, namely our righteousness and sanctification and redemption these are huge words righteousness sanctification and redemption but they speak of christ being the one who makes us holy because of his sacrifice on the cross cross and jehovah shamar the lord is there in this case it was god dwelling in his temple the last chapter of ezekiel and the Lord fills the place. But Jesus, uh, in, in the New Testament, we read Paul's letters. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? The pictures in the Old Testament are physical pictures very often, but they speak of a spiritual reality that only comes to its fullness in Jesus. And we have these wonderful names of God. As we look at our final one, we go back to that beginning. Moses said, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? And God says to Moses, I am who I am. 
This is what you shall say to them. I am has sent me to you. Now, in the Jewish uh, uh, religion and in the terms of the Old Testament, there were six reasons you could stone a person to death. And one of them was for blasphemy because you claim to be God. And we read in John chapter eight in the New Testament, the group of Jews who are contending with Jesus. And uh, they say to him, you're not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you've seen Abraham because Jesus says before Abraham was, I am. And as soon as he said that, they knew that he'd used the sacred name of God before Abraham was born, I am. And he was declaring that he was the great I am, the Jehovah, the Yahweh of the Old Testament. And for this, they picked up stones to stone him. And I don't think they were little pebbles on the beach. These have been pretty big rocks. And it was because Jesus claimed that title for himself. I am the way, the truth and the life. And it's this Jesus whom we serve, who we love and who we follow and will bring us to our heavenly home one day. Amen.